Hello everyone. This is Dennis and you are on the Den Electro channel. Today I will tell you how to change the voltage of a voltmeter up or down. And it is much easier to do than you think. I think many people have had this situation in life when you need some kind of voltmeter. But you only have a voltmeter for a very high voltage or a very low one. You cannot use a voltmeter with a low voltage. And a voltmeter with a high voltage will show inaccurate readings. After all, it is always better if the arrow deviates not by a few divisions, but by the entire scale. That's my situation. I have a cool Soviet voltmeter from 1968 for 50 volts. And I would like exactly the same one, but only for 25 volts. But to change its settings, you first need to disassemble it. Under the dial is a mechanism for controlling the arrow and a large resistor. That is what interests me. All DC pointer heads are designed in the same way. Their circuit looks like this. The current is not supplied to the pointer mechanism coil directly, but through a resistor. The pointer mechanism coil has very low resistance. Even if one volt is supplied to it, the current will be so strong that the coil will immediately burn out. Therefore, a resistor is placed in series with the pointer head. By changing the resistance of the resistor, you can change the current passing through the river head. As a result, the deflection of the pointer will change. For example, if I want to increase the maximum permissible working voltage of my voltmeter, I will have to increase the resistance of the resistor. It is very easy to do. My voltmeter has a 50 kilo ohm resistor, and the maximum deflection of the pointer occurs at a voltage of 50 volts. If I double the resistance and also supply 50 volts to the voltmeter, the arrow will not reach the end. It will stop approximately in the middle of the scale, since the current has become half as much. Now the voltage can be supplied even more. The maximum deviation of the arrow will occur at approximately 100 volts. Well, if the resistance of the resistor is increased 4 times, then instead of 50 volts, 200 volts can be supplied. To increase the voltage, the arrowhead does not need to be disassembled at all, but another resistor can be added from the outside. I have a different task now. I need to make it so that the arrow reaches the end at a voltage of 25 volts, and not 50 as it is now. Therefore, it is necessary to increase the current passing through the arrowhead. To do this, the resistance of the resistor must be reduced by half. In such simple problems, it is not necessary to use any complex formulas, but only logic. After the alteration, it is no longer possible to supply 50 volts to this arrowhead. Otherwise it will burn out from the high current. To change the resistance of the resistor, you can solder it out and put in another one. But I will not do this, but rather add a second, adjustable resistor in parallel with this one. I will take a Soviet resistor of 220 kilo ohms. Now when I change the resistance of this resistor, the total resistance of two resistors soldered in parallel will also change. If the resistance is very small, then the maximum deflection of the arrow will occur even at 5 volts. It is always better to take the resistance of the trimmer resistor at least twice as much as the resistor installed in the arrow head. Especially if you want to reduce the voltage by only half. This will make it easier to achieve an accurate deflection of the arrow. Note that before applying voltage to the new circuit, you need to make sure that the new variable resistor is twisted to the maximum resistance. If it is at the minimum resistance, then when voltage is applied, the current will go straight with practically no resistance and the arrowhead can easily burn out. I wrote the new numbers below the scale and did not change anything else. At the end, only the 50 volt number remained. But there I will know myself that I only have 25 volts there. I placed the variable resistor on the backside. To keep it from moving anywhere, I fixed it with hot glue. Now let's try to turn it on. I set the voltage to 5 volts on the converter. It is now supplied to the arrowhead. The voltmeter arrow shows less than it should. So I need to turn the variable resistor. I will turn it until the arrow stops opposite the number 5.
The variable resistor turned out to be very sensitive, so I can't immediately achieve the desired result. The needle stopped almost exactly. I'll try to add more voltage. Ten volts is almost right. But at 15 volts it shows a little more. I'll try to twist the variable resistor and change the readings a little. So that the needle stops opposite 15 volts. I couldn't set it exactly again. It shows a little less. At 20 volts the error is the same. And at 25 it's exactly the same. The difference is about 0.1 volts. I'll reduce the voltage again. Now at low voltage it shows only 4.5 instead of 5. And so on down to the very minimum. It turns out that when I synchronize with some number and start to reduce the voltage, the voltage on the needle voltmeter always shows a little less. But when I do it in the plus, the voltage always shows a little more. The difference is of course only in tenths of voltage, but it is still somehow unpleasant. This is most likely one of two problems. Either the arrowhead should be installed vertically, since it is designed to work in this position. In the horizontal position, the readings may be slightly distorted. And the second reason may be that one of the devices shows the wrong voltage. After all, on the right is just a Chinese converter for a few dollars, and on the left is an aero voltmeter manufactured 56 years ago. So there is no need to talk about any accuracy here. In any case, here I was not chasing some kind of precise voltage setting, but simply wanted to show how to set up a voltmeter. Then, when I install this arrowhead in my power supply, I will try to set it up so that at low voltage in the range from 0 to 10 volts, the voltage matches as accurately as possible. And above this, you can work with a small error. Because for a device that operates from a voltage of 5 volts, a difference of half a volt is more significant than for a device that operates from 20 volts. In addition to the main alteration, I made a small modification. Since I will use the voltmeter in one of my future projects, I decided to add LEDs to it for backlighting. I used two 3mm yellow LEDs connected in series. I installed them at the bottom on the sides of the dial and glued them with super glue. I also brought out the wires for their power supply from the back. I plan to use this voltmeter in a power supply. It does not have a case yet, but I showed how to assemble its circuit in one of the previous videos. The link is in the description. I completely assembled the voltmeter, now you can see how the backlight works. I turn it on. The LEDs are working, but they are hard to see in bright light. Only if you tilt the arrowhead. If you turn off the desk lamp, the backlight is already visible. But in real life it looks much better than on camera. But in the dark it looks really cool. That's all for today. Like, subscribe to my channel, ask questions in the comments if someone doesn't understand something and bye everyone.